Welcome to October. It is another month and time once again to talk about what you should be doing this month during the month of October as a PTO or PTA leader. And as usual, we are gonna start off with the role of president. Now the president, you really should be checking in with everybody this month. So I'm talking about your executive board team, your committee chairs, your principal, your teacher's liaison. It is really important for you to have your thumb on like what is going on in your group, as well as letting them know that you're there for any help that they might need, advice. Like you really don't want to let things go too far if someone doesn't really know what they're doing and so they're putting it off. Like that is, I found a super common reason for people who are slackers, who are not doing things. It's because they don't want to ask for help. They don't know how. They feel embarrassed. If you are going to them directly and just checking in with them you're opening that door for them to ask for that help that they need. So really don't skip that step. Uh, Again, make sure to be checking in with your principal, see how everything is going. So the other thing president should be doing is, of course, continuing to fill any open positions. This is going to take the load off of your shoulder because if there are or your shoulders, if there are programs or events that your PTO does not want to let go of, which if there is not someone to run it, that does not mean it should fall to you as president. That is not your job to do all the things. Your job is to kind of delegate and be the conductor of the orchestra, making sure everyone is playing on time, that the percussion is coming in when it's their opportunity, when the flutes are fading out, when or the woodwinds, I guess. Well, they're not a woodwind, but you know what I mean. When everybody's like working in sync, that is your job. It is not to be the primary decision maker or the primary planner or the primary doer. No, 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 my friends. That is a recipe for disaster if you think that's what your view is. And I have, you. Sh- if, if you want to get a better handle on more of what your job is as president. Of course, I have other videos about that. So be sure to check out the president's playlist that I have for more information about that. Membership chairs. Even if your school started in August and that you did your membership drive like early and so you kind of were expecting to be done, guess what? I would argue that you're not done. (laughs) You should continue to look for more ways to get parents involved. So it will only serve your group for the better in the long run if you have more members, because hopefully you are collecting their contact information. So you are not relying on the school to give to communicate with parents, because that is a huge issue. Like if you are not control of people's information, then you have no way of contacting them. Like if you are not collecting emails, how are you gonna contact them? You can stand outside with a sandwich board or pass out flyers, but wouldn't it be nice to not have to rely on the school to reach your members? Heck yes, and I've advocated a ton before about like the importance of starting your own email list. I have shared that like with, with my particular unit, we we had some email addresses of parents, but not everyone's. And for a really long time, and it's actually it's still continuing, district emails from our school, so like at pretty much at every level, they're all going into the spam folder. Like how many people actually check their spam folders? Not as many as should be doing it. So we're you're just not going to be reaching people. And that's what we found, that our involvement levels were decreased and it was really much harder to get things done. We just didn't have the support for fundraisers. We didn't have the membership numbers we were used to. We didn't have the volunteer base that we were used to. So really getting more members is key so that you can get email addresses, so that you can contact people and give them the opportunity. Because of course, most people do want to participate in some way. They might not be able to come in and volunteer, but maybe they want to write a check for 20, 50, 100 bucks, and that will benefit your group in the long run. So you just want to give everybody an opportunity to participate and get involved. And so that is going to mean asking them more than once. So going beyond the initial membership drive for sure. 
As the membership chair, you should also be checking in with the school secretary to reach out to new families that have come, that have kids, students that have transferred in since the start of the school. That is a continuing opportunity, especially if your district or your school has like a high um, amount of kids. If, if it's very transitory is what I'm trying to say. If kids are coming and going all the time, then that's going to be another opportunity to get those new families hooked in and get them a support network. Like they're going to be keen on getting up to speed with what's going on in your school. And it's an opportunity for the PTO to educate them and invite them into the school community. For fundraising chairs. Now this depends on like if you've run your fall fundraiser or not, or if you're doing a fall fundraiser. So it depends on your fundraising calendar. Like if you have already done your fundraiser for the year, then you want to go ahead and take a look at the numbers and see if it was enough. If you brought in enough, you know, less, of course, any expenses. If you brought in enough to fund your programs. If you exceeded your goal, well then congratulations, you're going to have some fun times with the rest of your PTO crew deciding on how to spend that extra money or maybe you want to roll it over to next year. And But if you didn't quite meet your goal, then of course you're going to want to start planning another fundraiser. Depending on what like how much money you need to raise, that's going to really inform the type of fundraiser you need to do. Maybe you got really close to your goal, and so you only need to do like a small fundraiser. So maybe that means you do a restaurant night fundraiser. But if you have to do something larger, then maybe you want to take a look at a catalog fundraiser. There are different things that are more seasonally appropriate, and I have a couple posts about that. So go ahead and check that out. You're going to find those videos under the fundraising playlist section of the channel. If you haven't yet had your fall fundraiser, then you're going to want to be fun finalizing those plans, shoring up your PR plan, making sure that you are letting people know in a, in many different ways and many, many different times about the fundraiser, why it's important, what the money is going to. Like some people really, they see all the fun stuff going on at school, but they don't understand that that is funded by the PTA or PTO. And they don't understand that that their contribution, their involvement is what makes that happen. So you really have to spell it out quite plainly for people because parents are busy. So make sure that you have plans to uh, really broaden your publicity plan because after you have chosen a fundraiser, the most important next step is getting that publicity plan together and then executing it. For family event chairs, you're still going to want to be recruiting volunteers, making sure you have enough hands to pull off all of the fabulous plans that you have made because you do not want to be... <laughs> running all of the family events by yourself. That is an absolute recipe for disaster. You will get burnt out so quickly and um, you won't be able to enjoy the events and your kids might even get mad. Like I have a really good friend in my PTA that her kids have said, oh, I wish that you weren't volunteering so much. Like I wish you could have been mom rather than PTA mom or PTA leader, I guess, uh, a little more often. So just be mindful of that and try to strike a balance with your level of involvement, as well as your ability to spend time with your kids at the events. I've been family events chair several times in the past, and so I really tried hard to carve out time to go spend some time with my kids at the event so that they just didn't feel like they were on their own or just with dad. Staff appreciation chairs. You're going to just want to be looking for ways to appreciate your staff throughout the year. It doesn't have to be anything major. It doesn't even have to be anything that breaks the bank. A simple note, like a handwritten note, can be really a, a nice little uplifting treat for the teachers to let them know that someone is thinking about them. The beginning of the year is such a hectic time. And so anytime you can infuse a little appreciation into their day, week, or month, it's a good thing. Room parents in October, this is going to be your one of your very first times to shine with the Halloween or fall festival or whatever you want to call it, because usually Halloween is an opportunity for a class party. So of course, you're going to want to be finalizing your plans. You're going to want to be meeting with your teacher if you haven't already and lining up volunteers for donations as well as in-class help. Treasures, you're going to want to be 
if you haven't already, setting up a binder system to, to keep organized throughout the year so that you have somewhere to put the receipts. The easiest way to prepare for the annual audit is to do it as you go along. So whether that's getting the treasurer's success kit that has a done for you binder system where all you have to do is print everything out, three hole punch it, toss it in a binder and then add your receipts. Or if you have another system for staying organized, you're just going to want to keep up on that. So really do it early so that you have the whole system set up and you can just slot everything in and you will see at the end of the year, you won't have a giant shoebox or a grocery bag filled with receipts. Everything will be nice and organized and you will feel like a rock star. So that about wraps up what you should be doing in your PTO or PTA for the month of October. If you enjoyed this video, I bet you're going to enjoy the other months that I have done as well. Every every month this year, I have done a similar video. So if you want to know kind of what, what is coming up, you can always skip to the January video and watch throughout the entire year to catch up to October. Or you can go back a month and see if there's anything you missed. Uh, a lot of the months kind of repeat over over each other, but some build on each other too. And so it's super helpful to give you kind of a larger look at what should be going on in your PTA or PTA. And then of course you should be customizing everything for your particular unit. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that you join me for the next one. Want even more guidance on how to be a stronger leader so you can run a better PTO or PTA? All these resources and more are waiting for you at ptoanswers.com.